here to speak to you about our research on the design and fabrication of smart garments. Smart garments are engineered garments to perform a specific function. The history of my work is strongly rooted in an old Japanese technique called shibori. It is a textile manipulation technique that led me to the discovery of transforming silk into three dimensions, permanently and seamlessly. So as I began research on wearable technology, it became clear to me that garments that were trying to be electronics were full of electronics and they, they could not possibly work well because they seemed to have all the electronic attached onto the garment. This led me to think that they needed to be more integrated seamlessly. The design and fabrication of my garment is a very, very complex issue. An issue that requires a multidisciplinary approach to make those garments. How will we power them? How will they communicate? So as we started to look at smart garments, we felt that we should look at them not as containers of technology, but perhaps as the device themselves. Could we make a garment that is ergonomic with all the electronics uh, integrated into it? Could we transform the body into an interactive interface? But how will we go about making those garments? What tools would we use, and how will we go from prototype to actual product? Knitting is the intermeshing of yarns into loop to create a fabric. I'm sure many of you know that already. So you can knit by hand or with the most sophisticated computer-aided driven equipment. That equipment is a form of 3D printing. We can create a garment seamlessly, uh, row by row, one layer at a time, which brings us to think about 21st century manufacturing. Manufacturing also means digital fabrication. So we can knit, yes, but we can knit with the aid of the computer. We can actually bring a pattern into our computer, translate that pattern into machine language, then we can do modeling and virtual sampling, and then we can go to actual prototype. So the piece that you see on the dress form is an actual garment, and the piece in the middle is a simulated model on the computer. You can see they are remarkably close, which makes it a very, very exciting process, especially for us trying to make garment devices. Another aspect of our knitting equipment and the knitting process is that we can call it also rapid prototyping another really important word in 21st century manufacturing. So we can make and iterate our pieces and our garment devices that we imagine on a knitting machine, and then we can prototype it over until we decide that our samples is right. Then we can, if we choose, mass produce it on the same piece of equipment, something that's extremely important if we want to think about scaling up we can also mass customize. Another exciting aspect of the knitting machines is the yarn carriers. So let's call the yarn a substrate, for example. In order to make a garment device, we do need conductive yarn that for the electronics, carbon fiber, all sorts of different types of yarn. So with these particular types of knitting machine, we have the ability to bring different yarns into the machine to create our garment, row by row, layer by layer, bringing in the electronics as we need them. At the Shima Technology Laboratory at Drexel, we work with 
trying to push the boundaries of their equipment. And then we also work with a multidisciplinary team. We work with material engineers, material scientists, electrical engineers, computer scientists, industry partners, and also yarn manufacturers who are designing the yarns of the future for us to design and fabricate the garments. So the next few slides, I will show you some examples of the work that we do in the lab as designer and fabricator of wearable devices. One major issue with a wearable device is, of course, power. How are we going to power our garment, and how are we going to use that power and keep that power to actuate? So we have one project where we are working on building or, or making the building blocks for a garment that could harvest its own power. We are looking at Wi-Fi, residual power, that can be harvested by an antenna, and then that can be stored into a supercapacitor. A supercapacitor is a form of battery. So where we are with this project today is that we have a simulated antenna that has been uh, designed by our engineers that we think will be able to harvest the energy and charge your supercapacitor. You have now next to the simulated, you have the actual prototype that is not yet knitted into the silver yarn for the antenna and the stainless steel yarn for the supercapacitor, but you could see that this is well underway and we will be testing it in the near future. An important area now for garment devices is, of course, medical. Here we have an incredible chance to take bulky medical devices and replace them with garment devices. In this case, the project is about a belly band to replace current ex existing maternity devices, monitoring devices. So this would not only uh, improve comfort, but it will also allow a pregnant woman, while being monitored in the hospital, to remain mobile during her labor. Uh, this particular project is actually powerless. It is works on an RFID, where we will be able to take the power away from the belly band and make the reader in the room like be in charge of the power. In order to do this particular project, we worked with 3D modeling, where we analyzed the yarn, the fit of the pattern, so that we could really make sure that we could have a good prototype in order to have the response that we want for the particular belly band. Here is where we are today. We have a passive RFID in the belly band that is now able to be read by the reader and we can actually measure the movement of that belly band. The last project I'm going to share with you today is fairly new. It's called the Exoskin. It was first designed as an interaction device for uh, haptic and computer environment. But it soon became clear to us, because it's tendon actuated, that it has incredible potential for rehabilitation and being an assistive device. You can see the first model that was made out of 3D printed part, where now we are taking the standard actuated and 3D printed part, and we are replacing it with a knitted glove. This knitted glove is made with special yarn, where you can see the darker, the lighter yarn are actually replacing the 3D knitted part. It will be a much more comfortable, much more uh, easy to wear, but also an incredible device for rehabilitation. So we're really, really excited about this project and look forward to uh, show you in the future the development of this particular project. Today I've shown you all of the machine that we use, etc. but I think it's a very important thing that we need to remember. And it's not about the machine alone. It's about the incredible people who work on the project and their imagination and their tenacity in order to get these projects and understand the equipment, push the boundary of the equipment. Yes, we work with incredibly uh, high-tech equipment, 
but without the people that run them, the equipment is not capable of making extraordinary product. It needs us to be there behind the scene. Also, it is the students that we work with that are the incredible thinker of tomorrow who will be making the device of the future. Thank you.